Hi, my name is Elizabeth Venn, and I'm a curriculum designer here at Dreambox Learning. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about some new measurement lessons that we have recently released into our curriculum. It's super exciting because these particular lessons are going to be addressing standards in grades kindergarten through second grade. The lessons I'm talking to you about specifically today are addressing grades one and two standards that we did not previously have any lessons to align to. So this is going to really add some valuable learning experience to our program for your students. In these lessons, you will see students doing things such as measuring with abstract units and standard units, comparing lengths, composing and decomposing lengths, and adding and subtracting lengths. Why measurement? Why was it important for us to design and release these new lessons? We care so much about the learning experience your students have in Dreambox, and we recognize that this was a large missing piece that needed to be filled for your students in order for them to gain conceptual understanding and lead them into um, that development of skills and knowledge that is necessary for uh, learning the later on domains of geometry and measurement and data, specifically when they get into lessons where they are learning about and understanding how to measure area and perimeter. So um, you'll see with these lessons, your students are getting a really early development of linear measurement. measurement. They'll be using different and familiar tools to measure distances. They'll be realizing and understanding the need for standard units of measurement. And we really wanna build their foundational knowledge and conceptual understanding in order to progress to those domains later in um, grades three through five and six through eight. So um, skills and strategies that students will be working on in these lessons, they will be understanding that measurement is linear distance. They will see that length is determined by how many of a smaller unit can be placed alongside of it. They will see that they will understand that larger units can encompass and be decomposed into smaller units and they will develop the understanding of the need for standard units. So I'm gonna show you a couple videos of some lessons and what they look like. In this lesson, you will see that students are being asked to measure a notebook with two different tools, a pencil or a crayon. We give them the option of what they wanna choose in other lessons, we actually give them the option of if they want to measure the length and width or the length and the height, they can rotate the object if they wanted to measure the width instead of the height, such as on this notebook. In this particular lesson, we're only asking them to measure the length of the notebook. Um, we do allow them to choose which side they want to measure on and they can measure up the middle. And so you'll see that this is really giving some students some student agency while also providing them with some context that they'll be familiar with, such as a notebook and pencils. These are common objects that they would see in their classroom in school and, um, and possibly be doing measurement activity, activities like this in the classroom. You can see when a student gets the answer wrong, we draw their attention, give them a little prompt, um, count the pencils, and then they are able to fix their answer and get it right and move on. So the next type of lesson I'd like to show you is later on in the learning progression when students have come to the understanding that there is a need for standard units, we move them into lessons like this where they have a draggable ruler and they are measuring different objects along the ruler. In these lessons, they're working specifically with the units of centimeters and inches. In other lessons, we actually have them use yardsticks, meter sticks, and rulers to develop the understanding of a foot, a yard, and a meter. Um, and as you can see, we have lots of different visual and audio scaffolding for when the student is getting the answer wrong and not understanding what they're supposed to be doing with the ruler. So eventually they understand that they need to measure from one line to another line, count those lines, and fix their answers. That is it for the new measure lessons for grades one and two. 
I will be speaking with you in a separate presentation about the other measurement lessons that we have for kindergarten standards. Thank you for watching this video. As always, reach out to me on Dreambox Nation if you have any questions and have a great day. We hope you enjoy our new measurement lessons. Thank you.